Whether they're the CEO of a Fortune 500 company or they're a solopreneur entrepreneur just starting up, media, marketing, and PR is a trifecta of skills that can take you to any level you want to be at. At the end of the day, it comes down to this. You have to tell people what your story is, what makes you different, and using media is absolutely the most powerful way. We wrote the book Celebrity Branding You, and there was obviously a very big need for these skills in the marketplace. I've been able to work with Dan Kennedy, Bill Glazer, Perry Marshall, Jeff Walker, Mike Koenigs, Brian Tracy, Michael Gerber, Dr. Ivan Meisner. There's a really defining moment when I was talking to George Bush one day. There's a good five to ten minute period where I kind of got lost talking to him where I realized that these celebrities are just like everyone else. And it was at that moment that I really figured out, wait a minute, with the right team and the right buzz building strategies, the right celebrity branding, the right PR, media and marketing, any one of us can become a celebrity. Nick is the media mogul of this age. If you need PR, if you need marketing, if you need to reach out to your audience but don't know how, you gotta get in touch with Nick Knapp. Nick consistently, every single time, comes through. He is actually quite amazing. You should do business with him. He's the best in the world at what he does, and he's one of the most high-integrity guys myself and my team have ever worked with. If you're looking for an agent to maximize your celebrity status, your business, and your income, Nick is your guy. Nick is our guy. first thing we did was a television show and we got it aired on NBC, CBS, ABC and Fox and it really changed people's lives from there. We did the same thing with best-selling books. I've now made hundreds of people in over 16 countries around the world best-selling authors and we've gotten people on USA Today, Wall Street Journal, Newsweek, Inc. Magazine. The coolest part is we've been able to do things that people said you can never do that for the small business and we've been able to do it and we've got so much more that we're able to help people with. Nick, thanks for joining me today. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, Celebrity Branding Agency? Yeah, sure. I mean, so Celebrity Branding Agency, we are the largest uh, personal branding agency in the world, servicing you know, over 2,200 clients in 33 countries around the world. And we help people become the best known at whatever it is they do, whether uh, in their marketplace, whether that marketplace is the street corner or the, the globe. The budget's just different. But we help people like you said, become the best known in the world of whatever it is that they do. Okay, awesome. And then um, how does media and marketing and PR affect uh, a small business or you know, a company that's just starting up? How does that help them dominate their uh, industry or their uh, target market? Well, I mean, so I call that a business trifecta. These are the three things you have to have in your business to be growing, media, marketing, and PR. What happens is most people don't know the relationship that they have, and they think they just need PR or they just need media or they just need marketing. You know, marketing really is the only thing that will move the needle. The other two will not as far as profitability. They might get you credibility and awareness, but if you want to make money, which we all have to stay in business, then you need marketing too. But your marketing works much, much better when you have media and PR to back up who you say you are in your marketing. All right, awesome. Thank you. Um, and then in your national best-selling book, Story Selling, um, you mentioned that your brand is your story. How do you develop a great story? I mean, most of the time your great story is already, you know, with you. you. All the things you did up to this point in your life to, to get you where you are today, most people find those, think that those won't be that interesting to other people. Well, they're often very wrong. I mean, the, the fact, everything you've been through to get to where you are right now positions you uniquely. When told in the right manner, uh, you know, you, you can't tell every single time you got a bump or a bruise or, you, you know, whatever. I mean, you can't tell every element of your life story. But when... When the right elements of your life story are woven together correctly, uh, it's really easy to tell a story that's very compelling and positions you as the only person in the world uniquely suited to help people with the problem that you can solve. Okay. Um, and then for someone who's just starting out, just started their brand new business, has a pretty well-developed story, um, what should they focus on mainly to get the most exposure to that story out? Uh, I mean, you know, building marketing campaigns, I mean, every, anything you need in life is just one good marketing campaign away, whether that's notoriety, money, you know, whatever it might be that you need. And so I tell people, look, focus on, on how to build out that next marketing campaign 
uh, that's how you get your story out. So you know, focus on who are the people you want to reach and what's the result you want to have and build a multi-step marketing campaign around that, you know, that idea. And, and you, know, you might have to tweak it along the way, but you'll be you know, ahead of 99% of the other people in the world who don't understand how to build marketing campaigns and are just waiting there for the rest of the world to come. Awesome. Great stuff. Um, and then you're a national best-selling author. You've uh, created national, a lot of other national best-selling authors as well. You also have the National Bestseller Summit once a year. Um, explain how becoming a national best-selling author is a game-changer for their business. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it absolutely changes everything. Your position so, – so I was just talking to someone earlier who specializes in uh, – oh, who's a, a dentist, sorry. He's a, an oral surgeon, and his and a business development guy was in here, and he was saying, well – how I'm a dentist, let's say, so or you know my client's a dentist, so how can becoming a best-selling author help him? And, and I say what I tell everybody. Well, first of all, you know how many other dentists in the marketplace are best-selling authors? He's like, oh, I never really thought about that. That's probably none. I said, right, exactly. So first of all, you have a huge cre- you know a huge credit to your name when you are a best-selling author, and people just listen to you more. They, it's funny. I mean, the look in their eyes is actually different because they know you must know what you're talking about. And that's just the way, because of the way we've been raised with books and, you know, classrooms and everything else, I mean, it's a simple equation that if you've written a best-selling book, then you must be the authority on the subject. And also, when you have a book, you know, and you've written on the subject, then people just assume that you own that marketplace. There may be a ton of competition in the marketplace, but people don't know that, and they just assume that you own that competition. So, uh, I mean, it just, it, it changes everything, and it's, the sad thing is it's hard to, it's much easier to see it once you've done it, but you know you got to have some faith and jump off that cliff to make sure you know to get it done. But then once you do get it done, it's amazing what the perception is of you and how quickly everything changes. All right, and then with a bio like yours, uh, you, it would seem like you've never had any failures, but we all know you have to go through some bumps and bruises in business and life. Uh, could you just describe one of your failures and how you overcame it and how it shifted your mindset to get to where you are today? Yeah, and we fail all the time. We just try to fail fast. Um, you know, there's <laughs> certain things we launch or roll out that just don't work or you're just not a marketplace for it or we, you know, or we offer something and then realize, man, this is really harder to fulfill than we thought. Um, I mean, man, one of my amazing failures, much like many others, was I was, a, uh, you know, I was dabbling in real estate investing on the, investing on the side. And uh, during uh, the time when the market was just booming and then uh, the market crashed and I got caught with, multiple properties, many more than I needed to live in, I'll put it that way. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and some of them I was able to flip out of and make some money during the boom and then you know, lots of fun short sales after that just trying to get rid of all of them. Thankfully, I never had to go through any foreclosures. But, I mean, look, we, none of us can predict the future, and I definitely learned a lesson that if something seems too easy, it probably is. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've definitely had my share of failures. And then um, – so today, what drives you as an entrepreneur? You know, you're a best-selling author. You've been on all of these nationally recognized uh, shows. Um, you've been in a lot of PR. Uh, so what today drives you as an entrepreneur? What keeps you driving? You know, what keeps you going? Uh, man, I'm always just trying to find unique and innovative ways to help other people help more people. So, you know, the fact that you are, uh, you know, a dentist or a lawyer or a personal trainer or a consultant, you know, I, I know that you're out there in the world trying to help people. And so I want to help as many people like you as possible, you know, become successful because that way, you know, I can have the most impact in the world if I work with a lot of people who are helping other people. So my mission is to help the most people, help the most people. And so, you know, that's, that's what drives me every day. That's fantastic. Um, and then, again, for someone who's just starting out, you know, one of the key things that I've done early in my career is uh, – found a lot of mentors, um, people that, you know, are at the pinnacle of the speaking industry or at, you know, anything I try, they're always at the best at, and I try to find those mentors. Um, at a young age, you know, how important is it to find the mentors, um, and how should an entrepreneur go about getting them? Man, it, I think it's everything. I mean, without my business partner, Jack, who's, you know, 30 years older than me and been a mentor to me for <clears throat> more than half my life, uh, you know, I'm... I don't know where I'd be without him. I'm sure I'd be doing something probably just not quite as successful quite as quickly for sure. Um, and there's some things I never would have gotten to, I'm sure, just because, you know, when you, a mentor has, you know, they've, they've seen what works and doesn't work. They've taken the time to, to go through it for 20 years, 30 years sometimes, you know, where you don't have to mess with that. And so, you know, I, uh, I think mentors are extremely important. And, and 
know, go looking for them anywhere you can. I mean, just be on the lookout for people who are great at what they do, who you have things in common with. And that's how I found my mentor. He's the dad of one of my friends, you know, and uh, I just was intrigued that, you know, while everyone else in high school was kind of like, you know, figuring out how to date his daughters, I was asking him questions about his business because that's what I was interested in. Um, so, you know, it's just I find them wherever you are. And there's certainly lots of great mentors, uh, alive and dead, you can experience through books and CDs and all that sort of stuff. I mean, certainly I've listened to my fair share of, you know, the Tony Robbins and the Brian Tracy's and, and read Think and Grow Rich and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, if you can't get access to people that you want to know, there's still a ton of great knowledge in, in books, CDs, and DVDs that people have sold for, you know, sometimes 50, 60 years, and the knowledge is still valuable today. Now, you just mentioned you kind of went into the next question on your own there which is great. Uh, how important is it to invest in yourself and your mindset, you know, through the books and through the CDs? Um, and then is there only one certain type of uh, CD or book you should read, or should you try to expand and try to get as much knowledge of as many things uh, and kind of become a jack of all trades of knowledge? Well, I mean, there's, there's a practical limit to what you can do. So I would say be careful becoming a jack of all trades, but, you know, allow yourself you know, some exposure to things you don't know that much about as well. So, you know, it's hard to gauge. You're going to have to gauge out on your own. But, no, I mean, I think it's, uh, man, there's, there's, you can learn how to do anything with the right book or CD or whatever it is. And, you know, and, and mindset stuff is, you know, as much as those are kind of soft skills, quote, unquote, that stuff is as important or more important than anything else. I mean, it's, you know, in, if you do not have the right mindset, you're not going to succeed. It's just the way it is. So, you know, I'm, I'm a big advocate of figuring out, you know, who's the best at what they do, you know, who's, who's the best at uh, thinking big, and, and how do I continue to learn and hang out with people like that. All right. And then um, for someone who's tried it all, um, they've gone again and again and failed, um, what is the best piece of advice you can give to that young entrepreneur? Uh, keep going, man. I mean, you're, you're always just one one step away from a big breakthrough. Now, if you're doing – the same things over and over again and failing, then you really need to re-examine how you're doing it. But there's a lot of, you know, look, I couldn't, you know, when I was starting out, I was starting out in music, and it was a really tough industry. I mean, I had some successes with some kind of landmark, you know, songs on the radio and stuff like that I'd written and produced and stuff, but still never quite figured out the money side of it. But then when my business partner and mentor said, hey, if you would take that same skill set and all the things you just did for musicians and just flip them over to, you know, business people and represent them as their agent, you know, you would you would change the game. And that's what I did, and he was right. I mean, it was a very quick shift, and money was much easier to find just by taking the same skill sets and moving to a different industry. So, you know, just don't quit, man. You know, if you, if you know you've got a skill set, just be flexible, be looking around for where else it might be usable. Uh, and, you know, and success is just around the corner all the time. Awesome. And um, Nick, I wanted to say thank you for joining us again today. Um, it's been a pleasure having you. My pleasure, man. Thanks for having me.